For centuries, the mystical experience that have been induced by psychedelics have been the stuff of legends, religious ceremonies, and shamantic rituals. From the Amazon rainforest ayahuasca brew to the peyote cactus of North America's deserts, these substances have been revered for their perceived ability to connect humans to the cosmos, heal emotional wounds, and, and provide, provide profound, profound insights into, into the, the nature of, of reality. reality. And I know you're already wondering about the suit, okay? I just went to a fundraiser, this gala thing, 12 o'clock at night, I needed to come home and just film. I don't have time to put on some like funny mushroom t-shirt like I normally would, okay? Although if I did, I would wear that avocado t-shirt with the spaceman on it. Space avocado. Should I do that? Is that... And while modern science has begun to investigate the therapeutic potential of these kind of psychedelics, much of the ancient wisdom surrounding these substances remains a mystery. Enter the cutting edge world of artificial intelligence, which is now stepping in to decode some of these ancient mysteries. But to explain this fascinating AI research first, I wanna make sure you understand what the default mode network is. It's a distinct measurable pattern of brain activity that you can find in somebody when the individual is at rest and not focusing on the outside world, often referred to as the brain's autopilot. It's made up of a bunch of different groupings inside the brain and they all start talking to each other in a noticeable pattern when somebody is daydreaming, reminiscing or engaged in some kind of like introspective conversation with themselves in their head. Technically, the regions include part of the posterior singular cortex and the inferior parental lobe. I could point to there too because it was like prefrontal and posterior, but then uh, inferior, that could be the whole thing in me, but. Interesting. But the DMN is important because it's actually linked to our self-referential thinking, meaning it's part of what gives us a sense of ourself. When you're actually imagining some movies, you really do sort of leave your brain. You know, you don't feel like yourself until the movie ends and you kind of reallocate yourself back into the seat and you're like, oh, here I am. I'm in a movie theater. I am Dylan. But it's not just about putting yourself in your shoes. It's also the same part of the brain, the default mode network that helps you put yourself in other people's shoes. The same pattern of brain activity can be found when you're imagining what someone else is going through. And there's a connection between this brain pattern and types of mental health problems like depression. In fact, an overactive default mode network, DMN thinking, is often tied to excessive rumination. Something I suspect that I have kind of, like I think I ruminate more than I'd like to, or negative self-focused patterns. So I wanna tell you about this really interesting study where artificial intelligence was applied to a bunch of essentially people who had uh, psychedelic experiences. Now, of course, you're probably wondering where do they get the data to feed something like AI? Well, they actually have this website that's called Eroid, I guess, E-R-O-W-I-D.org. So obviously getting the amount of data they needed through new traditional methods would mean getting way too many people high on psychedelics. But this old website was actually established during the Clinton presidency. And that's why it's probably giving you some MySpace or GeoCity vibes. It's actually a really fascinating data source because it's a kind of forum where people would actually share their psychedelic experiences. You know, most of this was done when the internet was still really anonymous and people really did share that kind of stuff. It wasn't so much about social clout like it is today. And each drug has what's called its own experience vault, where users posted detailed and often very vivid experiences that they went through. So we can take all the different kinds of psychedelics, the different categories that have already been sorted out, and then people have self-volunteered information under those categories. And after reading through a few, some of them kind of seem sound fun or interesting, other ones sound totally terrifying and would totally scare me to do anything like that. But I did get the sense they were written by genuine people. So of course, some scientists at MIT took a new and advanced artificial intelligence model and said, hey, why don't you look at all this data and tell us what's going on with these psychedelic experiences? So Samuel Friedman from MIT started this work with the intention to study the default mode network. He wanted to explore the link between the DMN and the kind of patterns that we see in them when we know somebody's actually being introspective. We can see if somebody's daydreaming or ruminating and we can see what the experiences were that they wrote on the internet and try to correlate the two basically. Wait till you hear the results because they analyzed about 7,000 different experiences that had been uploaded to the platform and they started letting the AI figure out which parts of the brain were most active that correlated the most with the descriptive experiences. And they published this paper, Trips and Neurotransmitters Discovering Patterns Across 6,850 Hallucinogenic Experiences. And amazingly, the science suggests that in the future, we could potentially adjust the hallucinogenic experience in the future. We could tailor it to the individual. Who would have thought AI was gonna help us do that? Now, don't get me wrong, the journey towards actually taking this data and turning it into a drug that has 
that effect is a much longer story and that's not gonna happen anytime soon. But we are closer now than ever before to actually decoding the mysteries that the ancient wisdom, that the psychedelic experiences have actually given people. And it very well could pave the way for the evidence that we need to really make it so that these are like a new tool that scientists and doctors can actually use to treat mental health issues. So I have three charts I wanna walk through with you. This is the first one. This chart looks at how drugs connect to certain parts of our brain and how that can lead to a specific describable experience. So on the left side, you can see the words that actually describe the hallucinogenic experiences. And here size matters. So the bigger the word, the more important it was. And on the right side, we see the names of the different parts of the brain that actually connect to these drugs. So this chart shows how certain drugs can cause hallucinations and the feeling of quote, losing oneself. Losing oneself is ego disillusion. And then here in the middle, you can see how the different drugs actually connect to the expression of genes in the brain, which tells us how these drugs actually cause the experience in the brain. Okay, so a couple more charts. The second factor underlying hallucinogenic experience highlights acoustic and emotional themes. And honestly, look at those top three. That's cool. Friends, love, dancing. What else is there to life, I guess? Okay, in my third chart, these are the factors that underlie hallucinogenic experiences that highlight bodily and emotional themes. Now here, sadly, we see depression becoming the largest word on the chart. That's interesting, because you see dancing, which I, seems like, you know, when people are tripping out or whatever, they're like, I saw some dancing, or I felt like dancing, and then there's a lot of time stuff, like months, year, you feel love, pitch, auditory, magic, everyone, sound friends, and then more like, descriptors of time. Look at this one, look down here, glow sticks. Come on, bro, glow sticks. I mean, don't forget this data is kind of old. Glow sticks were the rage back then. They didn't even have TikTok, you know? So just to expand a little bit more about how artificial intelligence is actually kind of be intersecting this world of psychedelics, which is something I knew nothing about before making this video. It was so fascinating to learn about. But AI is using that powerful needle in a haystack ability that it has to map the vast number of chemical compounds found in various psychedelic substances. And now machine learning algorithms are actually being applied to figure out how those substances will affect the brain, which is crazy. We're starting to make it so that researchers can understand at a granular level what's happening up here when people are tripping out on psychedelics. And this kind of information is absolutely gonna be priceless when it comes to trying to get a therapy that comes from psychedelics, something that can help with addiction or help reset the brain in the right way. We will need this kind of nuanced understanding to ever get anything legalized. Yeah, on top of that, think about how powerful it is now that we have neuroimaging data, the fMRIs or the EEGs, and we can use that, you know, coarse grain data with artificial intelligence and some information about what the person is going through to vastly refine what it is that we see in these images. There really is unique brain activity happening when somebody is on psychedelics, which in one sense is nice from a research point of view because when the brain changes that much and you can see the detection, it lets us not get so confused with what normal traditional brain brain activity would look like. And remember, machine learning can look over a whole lot more images than any human could with a much more precision eye, potentially even giving us some clues into what it is to be conscious, like what the brain activity looks like for somebody who's conscious and somebody who isn't. And maybe we'll have some kind of like futuristic tricorder thing that we can like point at something or someone and say like, is that consciousness? And how important would having a tool like that be if we wanted to point it at some systems to find out if they actually were self-aware or they had consciousness? You know, I'm thinking like future robots or GPT-7, something that we're like, God, that seems so human, but does it laugh to itself when it reads a joke? Or does it just pretend? Is it an automaton? And speaking of these LLMs like ChatGPT, they're also now being used in all sorts of fascinating ways to look through ancient text. Yeah, indigenous stories and shaman teachings to help us understand the culture and what people were going through from those psychedelic experiences. I know I feel so lucky to be able to spend my day thinking about how AI is applied to all these different industries. This is just one that I just don't think I would have ever found if I wasn't like in as deep as I am on this YouTube channel. And I think it's going to pave the way for personalized medicine in the future. In individual patients with individual brain patterns that can be observed. And we know that if we move them in some direction, the person will be happier, healthier, and you know, obviously they can send to it. And that's a treatment that we'll have access to. That's great. Maximize the benefits, minimize the risks, because now you can explain what you're doing when you're on these things. Okay, so now let's switch gears. I gotta tell you about this company I came across called Psychogenetics. So this company, Psychogenetics, is interested in nervous system disorders and how AI can help us understand what's going on there. And they've actually built this AI-driven platform to help correlate behavioral patterns 
with different drugs. And using it, they have a drug that's in development called Euloterant. Euloterant. Euloterant, I think, is how you say it. Euloterant. And if this drug gets approved, it's actually there to cure schizophrenia. And it's in phase three clinical trials right now. But it's kind of a unique approach that I think will go hand in hand with psychedelics because you're looking for a behavioral pattern and you're having people describe what they're going through or other people observing them describing the behaviors before and after the subjects are given these candidate drugs to see what changes. And just by recording all of that data over and over again and using this behavioral analysis AI, that's how they came to this new drug. They started with 300 compounds, they kept correlating it to the behavior that they wanted and the behavior that was least like schizophrenia, the one that had the biggest impact, and now here they are, phase three clinical trials. And even if this drug doesn't work or it doesn't pass, so be it. But the fact that we're connecting the behaviors to the brain waves, to the compounds, and AI is taking a role in all of these aspects, and then another AI is actually sitting on top of all those discoveries and putting it together, that's awesome. But I suspect there'll be all sorts of significance in these findings. So hallucinate that subscribe button, help me get to my next goal, 7,000 subscribers. I'm only three away. That'll probably happen by the time this video comes out. Thanks guys.